Coach Ibalira, I invite all of you to today's presentation. And maybe I'll just take two minutes to get to know who's online. Maybe we'll introduce, um, everyone will go turn by turn just to say who is online and where you're from. Um, Ernesto, I think I will need your assistance on this, please. Hello? Hello? Yes, Rachel, I am hearing you correctly. Uh, good morning. Go ahead. It's okay. Okay. I can go ahead. Okay, I just thought I um, would have to uh, just speak with the participants, take two minutes to let everyone introduce themselves. So if I can get your assistance to click on each and every assist, uh, participant to take a, a second or two. Okay, I will open their microphones so they can introduce themselves, but we don't know if they have the microphone connected or not. Okay. Okay, go, go ahead, please. Okay, go ahead. Um, wherever you're plugged in from today, um, this presentation... Hello? Mm -hmm. Hello? Go ahead. Yeah. Hello. I can hear oh, you, Reggie. Go ahead. Present Our presentation is on the BCH education resources and the BCH virtual learning environment. And I welcome you to the presentation today. Uh, before we proceed, I would like to let everyone know that uh, the, these proceedings are being recorded and it is implied that uh, we have your consent to, to do the recording with you. So whatever you're going to say is going to be recorded. If you do not wish to be recorded, then your microphone will remain muted. Um, my name is Rachel Shibalira. I'm the BCH Regional Advisor for Africa for the Cartagena Protocol and BCH Matters. I have facilitated in uh, several BCH seminars at the national level and also at the regional level. Um, what you will see on your screen this morning or this afternoon, wherever you are, to the left, you will have the panel. Sorry, sorry, Rachel, could you please expand uh, the presentation because you have the collapse of the window. All right. Yeah, yeah, thank you. We will have two, all right, two, um, two screens. You will see two screens. I will have my presentation screen and you will have your screen as the attendant. On it, it will have the control panel and I think everyone is tuned in uh, using mics or speakers. Your microphones are at the moment muted so that we can have uh, the presenter speak and if you wish to speak then there's a place where you press and raise your hand and you will be given the opportunity to speak. If you wish to also put down a question you can type in on on the uh, on this tab that is written questions you can enter your question and you will receive your question and your questions will be answered at the opportune moment um, when you click on the view uh, on the open view you'll get down the, the drop down list and um, on the seventh one there's the auto hide control panel kindly and check this option.
just also to show you what is on the control panel, you have the quick, quick bar buttons. You have the arrow that is pointing towards the right that will show or hide your control panel. And you have the tool for being able to raise your hand. As we said, your, your, your microphones are on mute. And should you wish to raise a question or a comment, kindly raise your hand or type in your question or comment. And at the opportune time, we'll have this uh, responded to. The control panel will collapse automatically if you're not using it as an attendee and it will open when you click on the view and, and check it. As I said at the beginning of this presentation, these proceedings are being recorded and will be used later. We will show you how we will publish them and they'll be available as training, education training materials as they form part of the materials that are being uh, uh, prepared under the BCH project. So um, by you participating, it is implied that you have agreed to be recorded. And should you not wish to be recorded, then you will just remain on the mute. Do not take part in the, in the spoken part of it. The red button that is on, if you can see on my screen, you can see this red button. It shows that this session is being recorded. So this red button is going on, is, is, is on at the moment, and it indicates that the webinar is being recorded. For the agenda for this session, we are going to look at just a brief history of what the BCH2 project entails and where it is at. We are going to concentrate on the different BCH education resources that have been developed using the BCH virtual learning environment. We are also going to see how to use the resources that are available, how to design for the different stakeholders that and requests or needs that may arise. And later we'll have a session for questions, answers, and comments or discussions that may arise out of this presentation. So to just give an overall um, objective and overview of the BCH2 capacity building project, we will see that when the BCH project started, it was designed uh, to assist developing countries, uh, countries with uh, economies in transition and the least developed countries so that they are able to strengthen their national capacities to effectively access and, be, and use the BCH so as to be able to promote um, regional as well as sub-regional collaboration, networking and exchange of experience for both the national and regional BCH management. The project had five components. The first component was to have to develop a sub-regional networking and sharing of information. Once countries understood what sort of information they needed to put on the BCH, then they needed to share the same information. So the first component was to develop the networks. The second component, we, you can see it's highlighted in red. We are um, projecting it because this is the theme. This is the, the gist of this project because it's supposed to continue to give an in-depth fine tuning and development of knowledge, sharing training packages in the different five different UN languages. Um, there are six UN languages, but um, the sixth being Chinese, not that it is the least, uh, the materials are not developed, and there's a particular reason for that, but so far the materials have been developed in five UN languages, that is in Arabic, in English, in French, in Russian, and in Spanish. 
The third component was to have the extension of the regional advisor system. The fourth component was to have an extension of the national level learning events to stakeholders that have not taken part in the first project, the CH project. And the fifth co component was to support um, the establishment and internalization of the BCH focal point role. So for the purpose of this session, we are going to focus on the second component, which is the training material, training aspect. The BCH education resources are mainly online. And you can see from this seminar, we have um, uh, as it is online, we are able to meet different people from different places um, at the same time without really spending much expenses. So through these resources, we'll, we'll be able to know what are the different available Cartagena protocol uh, on biosafety as well as the biosafety clearinghouse learning resources. We'll also be able to learn how to access the BCH virtual learning environment and the different available courses. We will show you how to download and how to use the different virtual course components. We will also have a so short session on how to design the training activities and courses depending on the stakeholders and their needs that you have identified um, using the available resources. And you will also learn how to download install and run the BCH interactive module, which is another component of the training material that have been developed. Our virtual learning environment is on this platform. That is the uh, moodle.bch.cbd.int. We'll be able to go live on this site and do the and see the, what it is entailed in there. I'm just going to show you that site. So when you click on the BCH, it takes you to this module, bch2projects.org. And you can see from this page, we have the banner that says what the gives the title of the project. On the left hand side, on this extreme left hand side, you'll see the different national country virtual courses that have been developed by the different countries. These are private to the countries that have run these courses. Um, in the middle part, you will have the public BCH training courses and they are in the different UN, five UN languages. So we have it in English, we have it in Spanish, we have it in French, we have it in Arabic and we have it in Russian. For our past purposes, we are going to look at the BCH training course that is in English. And on the extreme right, you are current, if, if you do not have an email address to to log in, you have to ask to be given an uh, uh, access to it. Therefore, you send your details and you will receive a password and you'll be able to log in and use it. But if you do not have access, then you can use it. For the public courses, you can use, you can click go in as a guest. I would want to show you also the English webinar uh, courses that have been developed. I'm using specifically English because we are dealing with the English, but you can see from the entire list that they are developed in the different languages. So we have it in English, we have it in Spanish, we have it in, in, in French, Arabic, and Russian. Still on this extreme left, we have the calendar of in events which will show you the upcoming events. If there are any events, um, national or global, then it will show you and it will show you in different colors. At the moment, there are no upcoming events, 
therefore it is not colored or it's not coded. If there are any online users, you'll be able to see who is online, but currently there are no online users. So for the English webinar, I will click on it and just see a few that have been developed. We have uh, material, education material for the protocols, and you have to be registered to be able to access. Several uh, webinar videos have been posted already. The last one was as recent as yesterday. So if you want to see what is ongoing, all this, as, as I said, like this particular session is being recorded, and when it is done, the video will be uploaded. It will just be like the ones that we have here. So you click on the red button and you get into the webinar to see the different material that is available. So you can see from this list, several have been developed and several have been uploaded already. The BCH virtual learning environment, just to give a brief history of its development, has been built since the year 2006. It is based on a platform known as the Moodle. Initially when we started it was www.moodle.org. It is an open source, it's available. Anyone can go and use this resource. Since 2006, there are more than 70,000 virtual education sites that have been developed and more than 200 countries are, we can say, are participating. More than 60 million participants have been recorded so far, 2 million facilitators who, who include professors, gov public government officials, uh, universities, whoever wants to use uh, the BCH uh, central portal to gain information. They use this material to train their staff or to train the students so that they're able to make informed decisions as regards uh, genetically modified organisms. To be able to use, I have mentioned, you can log in as a guest or you can ask for credentials for you to be able to access. So you get to our platform, which is the moodle.bch.cbd.int. When you click on it, you get inside. And it asks you to, to give a password. If you do have a password, if you're registered, if you're registered, you will give your username you'll give your password and you'll be able to log in. And on this extreme right, you, it will show you if you're logged in. If you're logged in as a guest, then it will show you that you're logged in as a guest. If you do have these credentials, then it will tell you that you're logged in as Rachel, for example. If you log in as a guest, there are certain aspects of this, uh, of the material that you'll not be able to see but you'll be able to see largely what is in the public domain. If you do forget your password, then you click in here, sorry, you click on, on that button and it sends you, it asks you for the email to send, it sends the message on, on your email and gives you a new password. Um, on this drop down, uh, bar, it's the language bar, it will tell you if you want to do it in any of six languages, then you select the language on this yellow bar. For our purposes, we will do with the English language. So to be registered, you will have to send an email to Moodle at bch2project.org. You give your first name. For example, Andrew, last name, Smith, and your country. 
I'm going to use the live site so that we're able to see what the public training courses contain and also how to get into the national, um, the private, which are the national BCH workshop courses that have been developed. Okay, so for the public BCH training courses, as I said, they're in the five languages. We are using the English one, so you click on that, on the English training course, and you come to this page where you will see the different UNEP GF BCH education materials that have been developed. So far, we have up to 12 different training materials and still running. These materials have been prepared with the needs of the stakeholders in mind. I will go step by step to explain each. Just scroll down a little bit so that you can see the difference and then go step by step to see each of, it, of, of the training material. The BCH training module is has a guidance document that is in the PDF document in the PDF format. So if you want to know how to use the different modules, you have the guidance document that you can start with. The material is also available. You can download the complete training kit. You can compress it and save it on a CD-ROM. Um, the First of the materials, we have the stakeholder curriculum. This is a summary of all the available training resources that are available for the different stakeholders, the different groups. Uh, we, can, we have, for example, national data entry. Every country is required to give some basic information and how to go about that, they will find that in there the curricula for the national data entry. People who generate information, this could be universities, this could be NGOs, this could be civil society, this could be in the industry. There are different people who generate material, information that is necessary to put on the BCH. The curricula is available for them. We have curricula for NGOs and civil society, for industry, for scientists and academia for customs and border control, for media, the general public, phytosanitary. Then we have the training manuals. These are different manuals that are available in PDF format. It is basically to give an in-depth uh, review of the protocol. And apart from the protocol, it also shows us how to use the BCH central portal. So we do have an introduction to the protocol. It will summarize the different articles uh, that are there in the protocol. We also have an introduction to the BCH. This is to the central portal. How to go step by step if you are a user, either as a national authorized user, or if you are the person providing the national data in, uh, to enter the national data, or if you're just um, a, a, a somebody looking for information on how to deal with GMOs so that you can take to a particular country, then it will tell you how to surf the central portal. It will tell you how to find the information. Um, for those who are allowed to put information on the BCH, it will show you how to register the information how to become a party, how to use the BCH for the different um, stakeholders. We also have, that is the training manuals. We also have the interactive modules. The interactive modules are based either on the Windows system. These two buttons will show you introduction to the protocol 
and introduction to the Cartagena protocol. For those using Windows, then you are able to download that and um, go through the module so as to understand how to use how, the, the different articles of the protocol and also how to use the Bell Safety Clearing House. I'll come back to show you how the interactive module works. For those who use uh, the, the Apple and, and um, um, Linux, I think, we have uh, this zip, the ones that have been zipped, so you can use these two to you go to the Cartagena protocol and run the module on the Cartagena protocol and also have the module on the on the BCH. I will come back to show how the interactive module works. Down on the list of the different materials again, we have case studies. These case studies are very interesting. They have been developed and reviewed and thoroughly uh, interrogated, if I may use that word, by different stakeholders and some of the scenarios are almost as real as having to do the real application. So we have, for example, a trader wanting to import, a Mexican trader wanting to import seed. How, uh, what sort of information does he know, need to know so that they can take to that particular country. We have uh, case studies, they're all case studies, they, are, they apply different concepts uh, for different stakeholders. We have uh, for registering information, it can be data on using the protocol, it can be data for contacts, it can be data on specific LMOs, it can be data on, on risk assessments and laws. Um, the case studies can also be, uh, for example, a medical researcher looking for information on AIA procedure. It can be a risk assessment, for example. It can be um, um, a, a customs officer looking for different articles for capacity building. So the case studies are, are several. And we're also going to see how we can develop a different material for the different stakeholders when we get to that point. We also um, have ready reference guides. These are handouts that have been made available just to give quick reference. If you want a quick reference on the different acronyms if you want a quick reference on unique identifiers, if you ha want quick reference on different contacts, new parties, then the material is available. We also have discussion points which uh, the facilitators have used when they are running the national courses, uh, especially after you have done a, a presentation. You want to test the understanding and therefore you do, you either give the discussion points or you give uh, quick quizzes, seven and eight go together, so that you're able to test whether um, the message that you're putting across was able to be captured by your audience. So we have the discussion points and they come with their answers. We also have the quick quiz cards and it comes with the answers. And also to make, um, the course a bit lighter, there's uh, some games like the scavenger hunt that go together with, with the quizzes. We also have exercises that the presenters can use in the training workshops, so the exercises are available. There are several applications that have been developed. Um, we have, for example, the application that was developed by the Secretariat, which is called the Hermes. The Hermes has been um, initiated by several countries. They're able to sort of, uh, it's a platform for them to put their information, making their information readily available. So they, are, they customize 
their national information and they make it available um, through the internet and people are able to access. So to be able to develop it, there are different tutorials, different modules, six modules with different parts. How to use the harness, they're all available. The guide is also available. We have a different application known as the IX, PCH Development Tool. It is a lightweight JavaScript application and it, is, uh, it allows um, the user, mainly countries, to display the information on the BCH central portal. Again, the country will develop their basic information. You don't require any IT specific knowledge. You simply plug in and um, whatever information you have put will be available on the BCH central portal the BCH will be able to host it on behalf. This particular tool is maintained by the SCBD. Uh, we also have other promotional materials. Um, we have a flyer and we have a poster. Um, I'm just going to go back shortly to show you inside some of the material. I will take, for example, the case studies. So um, on the screen you can see the case study, the scenario is given. If you're running a training, then you'll be able to print this in advance. Give the scenario, the people, the participants can work either in groups or in pairs or individually, but they have to arrive at an answer. The case studies also have the trainer's notes, which guide the trainer on what is expected and the expected result at the end of that exercise. Um, Um, back to the public BCH training courses, we've been able to see the different training material that are available. Apart from the public training courses, we have national BCH workshop courses. These have been developed by different countries that have been able to participate in this project um, with funding from the UNEPGEF. They have been able to train they are stakeholders that they have identified within the country, either government officials or, or, or media or customs officials. Um, and the different materials or the different uh, workshop courses were put on what you see the left. Every country had their own um, um, training session and they were able to put whatever material was relevant to them. We are going to look at um, we are going to look at the the Ghanaian courses as a national BCH workshop. I will just to go back. Okay, training courses. I want us to take one national course. As I said, you either use as a public if you don't have, if you're logged in as a guest, then you have only access to the public. 
but if you have a username and a password you're able to log in and have access more access okay so I'm going to log in And we're going to take Ghana. Sorry, I seem to be getting mixed up with my password. Okay, let's move on. When I can get that sorted out, then we'll come back to that. Alright, after looking at the different material that is available, then we are going to look at how to design and develop a seminar workshop. In the event that you have been asked to develop a seminar or a workshop or a conference using the BCH material, what is it that you need so that you are able to run your workshop effectively and pass the message and let um, your audience know how to use the BCH and the available material. So you're going to be able to identify your target audience and the type of activity that you are going to, to develop. So if for example you want to, if for example you are looking to train customs officials, customs officials are your target audience. So you will know out of the custom official what sort of activity you want to develop. You're going to get the most suitable curriculum that will guide you in selecting the most suitable available learning resource. You can combine, you can do a combination of the different material that has, is listed, the interactive module, the case studies, um, and, and, and discussion points. You can combine all this. Um, so um, you will review your existing virtual courses, if there are any, as a country, and you, you look for the specific material that is suitable for, the, for, the, for your audience. The BCH material, education resources and material that is available can be used to design and develop different training activities or different parts of the courses or seminars. Uh, the, na the National Virtual Support course can also be used as and when required. If you're running a, a national workshop, all you have to do is get in contact with the administrators of, uh, of this site and they'll be able to give you the guidance and the access codes so that you are able to know what it is and for them to, um, uh, to, po to post for you the relevant um, access codes. You can customize these courses and they can be replicated to address different specific needs. We have seen from the various facilitation that we have done that you can collaborate either if you're working with industry, if you're working with the universities, 
if you're working with government, the knowledge has to be imparted and has to be transferred appropriately and therefore a collaboration of the different institutions is always advisable. All the webinars that have been developed this far are available and are free upon registration. If you want to attend, you have to, re to register, but they are free and they are public. Um, at this point, if you have any questions, then um, please feel free to uh, press the button and to raise your hand and you may raise any questions or um, give any comments. I thank you. Okay, the, the microphones are open in case you, you want to make any, any questions. No questions? Okay, Rachel, I, I see no questions from the audience, so maybe you, you can uh, finish the webinar. All right. Um, I hope the presentation was clear to everyone. I thank each and everyone for participating. Know that this information is public, this information is available, and the more you practice on it, the, the easier it gets to use. I thank you all for your time. I thank you for participating. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for everybody for, for attending the webinar. Uh, we invite you to, to continue participating in our webinar series and uh, to uh, forward invitations to whoever you feel or think uh, may benefit from them. Thank you very much. Good morning and good afternoon.